Good day, viewers. I am creating these videos to help teachers of math support their learners in making sense of mathematical concepts and their associated procedures and processes. And today, what I want to look at with you is solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Uh, and uh, what's interesting here is it's fundamentally a different approach to solving equations than it is through solving quadratic equations through factorizing. Uh, and we're going to see that coming out here. But if you haven't seen my video yet on solving quadratic equations by factorizing, you might want to look at that one first. So you get a sense of the contrast that's going on here. And what you can see here is I've already built a completed square or a quadratic expression and completed the square form uh, using my algebra tiles. Uh, I have a video on completing the square. So if you've not seen that one yet and you're wondering how pupils would get to this sort of point, then by all means, go and have a look at that. And that should help make clear how we can sort of get to this form. Uh, but the quadratic expression that I have there is x squared plus 4x minus 5. And I want to solve that equal to 0 by completing the square. And I've completed the square on this expression to give me an x plus 2 square. And you can see that the length and width of this square is x plus 2. And this is x long, 1, 1, so x plus 2, x plus 2. And then I've got a spare minus 9 there, which I've arranged as a square. I didn't have to arrange it as a square, but I've arranged it as a square because it suits my purposes for later on. So I want to solve that equal to 0. And I've set up my vertical here to split this into two parts. So this is my expression, which is my x plus 2 all squared minus 9. And over here, I've got 0 because I've got nothing. Uh, and what I want to do is solve this by keeping these two sides equal at all times. OK, so how am I going to go about modeling that? Well, actually, very similar, of course, to how we might model solving linear equations. But with one little sort of twist in there is, you know, whatever I do to this side, I'm going to do to this side to maintain that equality. Uh, and this is using that broadly object view sort of uh, way of working. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to add nine to this in order to remove this negative 9 and just leave myself with the square. I'm going to need some more 1s. And so having added 9 to that, to 0 pair and remove that square, I'm going to have to add 9 here as well. And you'll notice this time I have very deliberately arranged those as a square. And what I've done there is say, right, well, I'm going to, I've added nine to both sides of that. And so now what I just have is I have my x plus two square on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I have nine arranged as a square. And obviously, I've chosen these numbers very carefully so that that will arrange nicely as a square. Uh, you don't have to do that so much if you are drawing, but if you're working with the physical manipulative, you find it harder uh, to sort of get the sense of it if you can't actually arrange these as a square. Because obviously, the next sort of thing I'm going to do is say, right, well, I want this whole square to be equal in size to that square. I want this area to be equal in size to that area. So if I want this area to be equal in size to that area, what I've got to look at is how long do I make this and how long do I make that? Well, if I'm going to make that equal in size to that area, then this is clearly three long, whereas this is x plus two long. So what I've got there is that that x plus two, that length of x plus two, has got to be equal in length to the length of this square, which is 3. Except, of course, it doesn't actually have to be 3. And again, if pe pupils are familiar with working with these things, then they'll recognize that I could make this negative 9 by putting 3 across here and 3 down here. But also, if I made it negative 3 by going to add the other, oh, don't want the horizontal, 
by negative 3. And if pupils have got some familiarity with working with tiles at this point, they'll be familiar with this sort of idea that that could be negative 3 times negative 3. So actually, this could be positive 3 or it could be negative 3. And either one of those would make that 9 square. And that means either one of those, either making my x length positive 3 or making my x length negative 3, would result in this square. And then, of course, from there, I can see, OK, well, if I've got to make that, let's say I wanted to make that positive 3, then I've already got positive 2 there. So I need to make that, and I can might even put that in on this side. I've already got positive 2 here. So if I wanted to make the whole thing positive 3, I would have to make this length 1. So one potential way of doing that, and of course I'm subtracting the 2 because I'm saying, well, I've already got 2, so if I remove that 2, this has got to be 1. Or if I want to make this negative 3, then I've already got the 2 here, so to make this line negative 3, I would have to make that length negative 5. And so there's my other potential solution to that is negative 5. And like I say, if you're drawing pictures with that and just marking on potential lengths and widths on a diagram, then you can sort of create squares that do not have an actual, you know, unit uh, sort of integer square area. So you can create squares with an area of 8 or with 15 or with... Uh, you know, one or uh, not one because that's square or two or something like that. Uh, it's quite difficult to do that with the tiles and do that physically. So you would probably potentially use the tiles to sort of get an idea of what's happening there and then go very quickly into drawing pictures where these things weren't squ nice square numbers and then, you know, eventually working into the abstract uh, for this sort of solution and, so and showing what's happening. OK, um, but yeah, that sort of at least gives an idea and a sense of what's happening when we're solving that equation and working with that equation in that way. So that's my short video on solving quadratic equations through completing the square. Uh, as always, I'd like to say a big thank you to MassBot.com and its creator, Jonathan Hall, for providing this fantastic website, which I use, obviously, the virtual manipulative section. I use quite a lot. But as well as the virtual manipulative section, there is a huge amount, as you can see, on there for teachers of mathematics. I guarantee if you take some time to sort of get into these different bits and pieces, you will find it very, very useful. And as always as well, if uh, you are interested in using visuals and manipulatives to support your learners in making sense of math concepts and their underlying, the underlying structures of those concepts, then do consider checking out my website. My website is visiblemaths.co.uk and among the many things you will find on there, you will find a copy of or a link to a copy of my book. Here it is, the Visible Mass book. And you can go to the publisher's website there. That's Crown House Publishing. And through there, you can do a look inside so you can see some of the sort of bits and pieces that are in there. You can see some of the representations and some of the pictures. And if you like the look of that and you think it would be useful for you, you can, of course, place an order. I will be making these videos throughout lockdown and potentially beyond. So if you have a particular concept or process or procedure that you feel like you'd like to see modeled with uh, manipulatives or visuals, then please do get in touch and hopefully I'll get around to creating one for you. Thank you very much for your kind attention today.